Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on a lovely Florida Thursday. Uh, the indicated temperature, oh yeah, they're out. They're there, they're eating the bushes. And um, a minute ago they were engaged in some sort of revolting act, two of them, the one with the brown and white and the grayish looking one were doing something I don't wanna talk about, but um, you know, it's really unsettling having them sitting there, having them do whatever it is they do. They're staring at me. Right now, they're not paying attention, thank God. But I feel like the minute that I turn away, they're gonna start whispering to each other and come over like a pack of wolves. I do believe goats hunt in packs. And uh, they're gonna rip the flesh off my bones and have a nice breakfast. So we'll keep an eye on them. But I can tell you, this is very unsettling extremely unsettling <sighs> anyway okay today I have this 1985 Cadillac Eldorado Beeritz convertible uh, I'm very very happy to have this car I mean this thing is right up my alley uh, it's uh, you know it, it depending on where you look it's either the eighth or the tenth generation Eldo um, you know I don't really care uh, it's one of the two. It's the first real downsized Eldo. The Eldorado was always, there's the phone ringing of course, the Eldorado was always GM's crown jewel. Uh, most of the time it was Cadillac's most expensive option starting in 1953 uh, when that uh, very limited production car came out with a wraparound windshield. Beautiful, beautiful car and it's continued that way ever since. It was meant to commemorate uh, the um, 50th anniversary of Cadillac, Eldorado, meaning City of Gold, was a name that came from some woman in the, there. Look at they're moving. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, some woman named Marianne Marini in the marketing department came up with the name Eldorado. She probably won the chance to keep her job. And I can tell you right now that Janice in accounting thought she was a bitch. But... Um, Anyway, she came up with the name Eldorado and it stuck, and it stuck for, you know, 50 plus years and beyond. So uh, it's a, a pretty important name for Cadillac, and Mrs. Marini and her retirement condo in Palm Beach can look back with pride on what she did. Uh, but anyway, this is the 10th, uh, or I'm going to go with the 10th, we'll call it the 10th generation Eldo. I think that's what Wikipedia calls it, so we'll just pretend they're uh, uh, an authority and we'll go with that. Uh, also known as the, eighth, uh, the Ace Rothstein. El Dorado. If you remember the movie Casino, God, he's <sighs> right there. The eighth uh, Rothstein uh, El Dorado. If you remember the movie Casino, it began with the explosion, uh, car bomb in an El Dorado, you know, tin roof version of this car. Uh, and he survived because of the metal plate that was welded under the driver's seat by GM, uh, which, you know, it's, it's very tough to discern that internet legend, whether it's true or not. Uh, there is some talk that the 79s and 80s had some heat shielding or balance problems that they had to put a uh, steel plate in. You think it would be easier to figure that out, but it's not. Look at the goat in the video sitting there. I, I have no idea why anybody has goats. Certainly not in a, you know, normal suburban set. I mean, it, we are, we are not in the sticks here. I mean, there is no reason at all to have goats. None, zero. And uh, we're gonna have to have a talk with Peter about this. It just doesn't make any friggin' sense. We need to have a big goat roast or something. You know, put a goat on a spit and have a nice roast is what we need to do. Uh, anyway, so that internet legend, who knows if it's true, it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, you know, the car exploded and Ace lived, but uh, by that time, the casino business was too high-end for a low-level kind of gangster like him. So uh, he went on to become a handicapper in Las Vegas and, you know, seemed happy enough for a guy who his friends and women destroyed his life, and I certainly understand that. But um, anyway, so this is an 85. This is the final year of this body style. Uh, it was the first real downsized Eldorado. Before this, it was a behemoth of a car, giant car uh, from the uh, early 70s on, even, you know, 60s, whatever. Uh, it became a personal luxury coupe way back when, when there was no such thing as the personal luxury coupe. But uh, 67 saw the true birth of the personal luxury coupe market in the United States, and the Eldorado was really at the forefront. So. Uh, it's been a pretty neat car ever since. 
<clears throat> so I would say 67 was truly the first year of the modern El Dorado. And uh, it uh, went on to that uh, giant behemoth of a car. And then this one, which lost almost 1,200 pounds in weight, uh, a few feet in uh, girth or uh, width or length, and uh, became a smaller car. And some of the downsizing the GM did worked, and some of it didn't. Uh, in the El Dorado, the case of the El Dorado, it worked. They ended up selling a bunch of these things. They're universally considered very good looking cars. They retained that long front end, uh, stubby rear deck with the knife's edge lines, uh, slab sided. Uh, I think extremely attractive and uh, a good looking car, and that's why they sold quite a few of them. Uh, the 85s, there's some debate. I mean, one could say the 79s had better engines and therefore they're more desirable, uh, but I think the 85 is the way to go, and we'll get into that uh, in a minute. Uh, you can see the wire wheel covers, very, very nice. This one is finished in uh, 27 rich layers of tuxedo black. Sorry about the. What the hell is that bird? Sounds like he's right overhead. Jesus, if that comes down with the goats, I mean, what the... <laughs> Anyway, uh, dark uh, red burgundy leather inside. I mean, this is a very handsome car, although I will say women don't seem to like it. Uh, you know, so far, every guy that I've known has gone nuts for this thing. But the ladies are a bit like, eh, meh. So uh, to me, that makes it an even better car. Um, there were two different companies which did conversions of these Eldorados into convertibles, only one officially. And uh, 84 and 85 saw the only official Cadillac Eldorado convertibles of this generation. Uh, they were also a little bit controversial because there were some lawsuits that uh, sprung up from them. Uh, Cadillac had said that the last generation Eldo would be the last convertible offered. Uh, then all of a sudden, bam, out comes this one. So uh, guys who had bought the last Eldorado convertible because it was supposed to be the last Eldorado convertible in the 70s sued the hell out of Cadillac for making another convertible this quickly thereafter, thus killing their collector hope. So uh, I don't remember how that uh, lawsuit panned out, but probably nobody won except the lawyers. Uh, but anyway, two companies did it, Hess and uh, Iseman. Uh, they never did any official versions. And then ASC, American Sunroof Corporation, uh, they've been making convertibles for uh, makers for a very, very long time and doing it quite well. And they did this official Cadillac version of the Eldorado convertible in 84 and 85. I think about 5,000 or so made all together over those two years and only 2,200 in 85. So it's a pretty rare car. And uh, frankly, looking at the two different conversions, I have to say ASC, uh, they had the number. They did it better. And uh, that's probably why Cadillac chose them. Uh, being a B-Ritz, it has that big, long chrome. Uh, trim down the side. Uh, if uh, it still had the tin roof, that would go into this vinyl quarter top with a stainless roof reminiscent of the 57 Eldorado. Uh, I understand they fly off in the wind, but I can't confirm that. But uh, anyway, very attractive. Uh, but this thing was a ton of money. I, without the convertible, it was like 25 grand. Uh, with the convertible, that added more. I want to say the MSRP was up over 30. Uh, to put that in perspective, it combined. It, it, it basically you could have bought this, or you could have bought a 911 convertible, or you could have bought a 7 Series BMW, or uh, any other number of very high-end cars. So this thing cost a ton of money. And uh, frankly, they're a little bit of a bargain on the collector car market now. Uh, and I think they're very, very attractive. I love this thing. I mean, it's going to be very hard to pry this car away from me. They're getting rare as hen's teeth. They're very hard to find these days uh, in this kind of condition. So anyway, let's just get into this thing. The goats seem, uh, they're still over there, but they're not close. Thank God. I'm just getting into the mist that I'm fighting all the time. Uh, this one had the gold package. Now, I worked at a Cadillac and Buick dealership back in the 90s, and I remember this big room, and uh, uh, you would open the room, which had like two deadbolts on it, and this glow would come out like the lost Incan city of uh, all the gold packages that were stored in there, and uh, the dealerships would put them on the car. It was like the hood ornament, this little badge at the back, stuff on the side, all around the car, and they charged a fortune for it. It was like two grand on top of the stick. Uh, dealers made a ton of money on the gold package, and frankly, I think it's kind of stupid, but and people bought it. 
always a way to spend more money. Uh, sorry for my bag of crap in here and my tire inflator. It's just stuff that I carry around. Uh, in there is the original uh, lug wrench still in the styrofoam container. You see it has a... Um, uh, the older versions had a full-size spare, which really got in the way of luggage uh, space. It really just hung out there precariously. Uh, this uh, temp spare is a little bit better to deal with. Uh, the guy who owned this was very conscientious. He bought all the service manuals and, uh, you know, whatever else to have with the car. Kind of neat stuff. I like the way the uh, trunk carpet is finished in burgundy. Uh, I don't know if that's special to this car. Forgive me, I don't remember everything. Uh, or if uh, it's because it has the burgundy interior. And uh, up here you can see the option codes on the car. If you're interested in this one, you can pause the video here and uh, see how this thing was built. Uh, and of course the jacking instructions that, as we know, do not pertain to our uh, tranny mechanic over at Audi Europa. No, you can't say it, but I did. Over at uh, Audi Europa. <clears throat> jacking instructions won't matter to him. All right, let's have a look under the hood. I just love those slabby fenders with the high edges and uh, the wreaths and crest in the front. I, I, I think this is such an attractive car. It's probably why it was one of the few downsized Cadillacs that worked right away. Uh, even if, uh, frankly, the engines caused problems for Cadillac and made it crap. Uh, although by 85, they did sort it out, and we'll get into that. Uh, there were a plethora of engines available in this car from 79 through 85. You could get the 305 uh, corporate engine, which was a Chevy, I believe. You could get the 350, uh, which was a Buick engine. Uh, then it went to that 368 Cadillac cylinder deactivation engine. Uh, the 864 sucked. Everybody hated it. Uh, they only had that for like a year in here. Stayed on with the limos, but came out of the Aldo pretty quick. And uh, then stabilized a little bit with this HT4100, uh, which was a very small displacement V8, putting out crap for horsepower, but still getting V8 gas mileage. So, oh, the malaise era. Uh, one thing that's neat about this particular 85 is Cadillac recognized there were problems with the 4100. It was an aluminum block, uh, cast iron cylinder head, uh, cast iron piston sleeves, and through some variation of the uh, cast iron block over the uh, aluminum, or sorry, cast iron heads over the aluminum block, it ended up getting intake manifold leaks. And Cadillac would actually give you these little stop leak pellets, the kind of shit you bought at auto... Uh, um, uh, Auto Zone to put in your car if it had a. I mean, amazing. It reminds me of BMW giving 650 buyers quarts of oil uh, to um, uh, you know to address the fact that the thing eats eat your hundred thousand dollar BMW eats a quart of oil a month when you buy it new. Uh, Cadillac gave little pellets with a, a Cadillac part number that you put in these engines to maintain them. And frankly, if you have one of these cars pre '85, you need to use them. Uh, this car is after a certain VIN number where. Cadillac re-engineered the blocks. They welded in some sort of strengthening metal on the uh, cam bearings to do away with the need to do that. And uh, that's why these uh, 85s uh, post the certain serial number are uh, most sought after by collectors. And it's just funny how this car that was, you know, kind of the, you know, basically just a used car not that long ago is now, uh, oh God, the goats are getting close again. I swear to God, if these things come at me like spider monkeys, I can't believe I didn't put my carry piece on this morning. It's in the bag in the back. I'll never reach it in time. They'll get me before that. Hopefully they don't perform those revolting sex acts on me the way they did on each other this morning. But um, but anyway, uh, this now is a official antique, these cars, and can be uh, displayed at certain snooty, uh, you know, car club antique shows where all the guys have handlebar mustaches and look down their noses at uh, anybody who doesn't have a Hispano Suiza. This car now qualifies. Uh, it must be a, bit, a little bit like SCCA racing where the old Miatas now qualify for vintage. Uh, racing and they're running around out there with the old Grand Sport Corvettes and uh, you know MGAs and it's really pissing those old guys off so it's a lot of fun for me uh, but anyway so this is 4100 about 140 horse maybe a little bit less made it to a turbo hydra uh, transmission, not the famous old three speed, but now a four speed unit with a lock up torque converter. Uh, it uses the same basic drivetrain that the uh, 67 did. It's got this chain driven, the Tornado. Uh, it, it has this chain driven thing off the. Uh, God, they are so close. 
Look at this thing. He's chewing on that thing, but he's thinking of my legs and my toes. The brown, I think the brown one's the leader, that thing. With the horns, he's got a real angry look about him. I just, I don't know. Goat roast, goat roast. That's what's coming, get ready for that. Uh, anyway, it uses the same basic drivetrain that the, uh, they were using since the late 60s. It's a chain-driven thing to run the front wheels, and uh, it seems to work well. Uh, I don't hear of many problems with them. Another nice thing about these as collector cars is they're very, very maintained. Most of the parts are available in AutoZone. I mean, almost everything. Uh, you know, they're, they're yeah, alternators, power steering pumps. It's a very, very easy collector car to own. Uh, body panels and shit, that's a bit tougher. You know, nobody's really built those mostly you get those off parts cars but uh, mechanically uh, it's it's a piece of cake to own this thing um, here's another thing that's neat about this car that Cadillac did that might have helped sell it is uh, obviously it is independent front suspension with that front wheel drive they decided to give it independent rear suspension uh, first Eldorado to have that and additionally they gave it um, uh, four-wheel disc brakes. So, uh, I mean, the thing's like a Corvette <laughs> in 79 anyway. I mean, four-wheel independent suspension, torsion bar front, uh, disc brakes all around. Uh, if only the thing had 400 horsepower, it would have been pretty friggin' amazing. Uh, I love the Rolls-Royce treatment on the front, the uh, grill with the wreaths and crests, the four square lights with the running lights beneath, uh, that gold Cadillac script, now a little bit worn out after 48,000 miles, but still there, uh, and uh, more gold wreaths and crests, the guy who had it before added on the license plate, uh, I don't know, I just think that's a handsome car and I really do love that it is a factory convertible uh, that's gonna help the collectability as time goes on and very nice lines now I put this uh, tonneau cover on this morning badly it's not snapped all the way around and back uh, for one thing I had an indicated 38 degrees this morning uh, which I know you're laughing in Buffalo but that's pretty damn cold here and uh, I don't know it's just for one guy to try to snap on this tonneau cover in 38 degree weather it just couldn't happen and so I got it on as well as I could and uh, with two guys in a little bit warmer weather it'd be far easier uh, but in a minute I'll get that soft top up all right so we've been around the back let the little crests and the taillights uh, have a look inside there's more gold kit shit uh, around the lock and uh, also even the lock plunger as part of the gold kit stuff uh, Cadillac the Eldo again top of the line stuff. They always had the most beautiful interiors uh, This 85 is no exception. It's got that beautiful premium pillow leather lovely look at this Oh my god, it's like a lazy boy on wheels. It's a fantastic place to sit. Uh, lovely leather wrapped thin little steering wheel. Nice. Uh, you can see again the low mileage car. Uh, these things on high mileage beaters are all exploded, the door panels, but it's got nice rich carpet in the bottom. Uh, nice materials. Acres and acres of faux wood. It's got Greenpeace and the Sierra Club seal of approval. Uh, love the big ridiculous vintage kind of door pull. I mean, you have to remember the average age of the Cadillac buyer back then was probably 105 and uh, all of this seemed quite reasonable to him uh, because it's a convertible they could no longer run the uh, seat belt up into the roof the way it would have been so ASC had to fabricate a way to get it down here uh, add some new structural crap uh, this thing goes through here snaps into this guy here and then you have shoulder belts I'm not going to get into all that now uh, the rear seats are Canadians they're going to be extra chipper with their pillow leather lovely you got some speakers there on the side uh, ASC cut down the original panels and made them look pretty they did such a nice job making that of course I mean it is a true factory convertible I mean you went into Cadillac and bought this and the VIN number comes back to a convertible so it had to be of the highest quality to uh, first of all to justify the giant price and secondly to be able to be sold with warranty as an original Cadillac nice little map pockets in the back I guess your Canadians can stuff some handguns in there uh, or whatever it is Canadians need uh, Molson and uh, everything's gonna be lovely in the back and let's hop in Get my seat back a little bit 
Uh, you can get a variety of different dashes in here, digital, analog, whatever. This one has the analog, which is just fine. Uh, very simplistic. You've got a bunch of idiot lights. You can see all the stuff that Dalton didn't clean up very well. He didn't wipe any of that down, because why would he, obviously? Why would he bother? <sighs> But um, anyway, only 48,000 miles on the clock. Uh, there's your PRNDL indicator. Uh, here's your cruise control on off. Uh, here's all your idiot lights in those two information centers. Uh, over here, this has the uh, auto dimming and twilight sentinel option. Nice, so that'll automatically dim your high beams and uh, automatically turn on and off your lights. You also have your wiper control above that. Uh, I do like the way the ledge uh, dashboard hangs over the uh, recessed dash face with all the acres of wood. Fake wood. <laughs> it looks good, I have to say, for GM fake wood, it's pretty good. And, uh, and I don't know, it just looks nice to me. Uh, there, you know, this could have been cleaned up. He could have just, I don't know, this is the top switch that ASC added. Uh, here's a symphony sound, I don't know. Let's just fire this thing up. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the uh, top up, because I'm not driving around. Let's see what the temperature is now. It was 38 earlier, it's gone. On the 37, it's showing me now, so uh, even less. Wonderful. I love it, but I know when I get to work, everybody's gonna be complaining about the weather. I have to remind them about August and how shitty that is. I mean, honestly, I mean, be cold for a day or two when you're hot for 900 days. So this thing all just snaps out. Very high quality tonneau cover, I might add. Stores nicely in the trunk, but I'm just going to fling it in the back seat for now. Uh, and uh, we'll get the uh, soft top up. Beautiful chrome trim all around. You know, the car is extremely elegant, I have to say. Uh, it really is a terrific bargain considering uh, what it costs on the collector market. All right, I'm going to stop it here for a sec. To, eh, it's not going to let me stop it to release these guys so they're not a pain in a minute. I want to move forward a little bit to try and get out of the sun. See if that does anything. All right, so I'm going to get these snapped back in. And we can run our four windows up. Uh, in the uh, coupe version, those quarter windows were fixed. They did not go up and down, so uh, ASC had to make them go up and down, which added, again, a lot more money to the sticker price. Nice. You see it's got uh, illuminated visors if uh, you need to powder your nose. And then these really crafty things. I don't know if they're factory or not, but they clip onto those uh, sun visors and uh, make it so they stay in place. That's a nice feature. There's a lot of cars that should have that. Um, let me shut it off when we go over the rest of this. Okay, so there's your uh, trip computer fuel data thing, which I guess not trip at all. It's just fuel data. Uh, mileage in this car is not terrible. It's uh, uh, rated 18 and 27 or something, 25 on the highway. Uh, I watched an old Motor Week review of one of these on a touring coupe, and they averaged 20, uh, which surprises me. I really think that's higher than I thought it would be, and frankly, higher than it looked like the needle moved when I drove this thing. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you've got your electronic climate control there. Nice heat works, I can attest to. All digital. Uh, you've got a uh, little glove box here for all your crap. Uh, really nice to see all this, the original books. That's the original tool to remove the uh, uh, the wheel uh, covers, the gold key uh, delivery system they had. There's the, I mean, this guy made a ton of money back then. He's probably retired now. Uh, Max Murphy, the service advisor, I think he was from China. Uh, you've got um, warranty assistance. You've got, I don't know, all the crap that it came with. Maintenance schedule, owner's manual, a uh, bunch of papers and documents. Uh, nice to see all that still with the car. Let me get that back in. Uh, here is one of my favorite uh, items of all time. Uh, this is a factory CB. Now in 85, the whole CB craze had completely passed. I mean, it was gone. Smokey and the Bandit was, they were on like Smokey and the Bandit 9, you know, starring David Carradine and, uh, you know, that fat woman from 
all in the family. So, I mean, it was long past, but Cadillac stuck with it and they still had the uh, factory CB option. Uh, when I bought this car, that was uninstalled. It comes out with a little plug at the back and that little support for it is removable. Uh, I put it all back in because I friggin' love CBs. Uh, you've got an ashtray here. Looks like the guy didn't smoke, so that's a miracle in the 80s for an old guy. Uh, it has a little built-in trash can that's removable and emptyable. Uh, love it. Really cool Eldorado stuff. And, uh, you know, of course, because it's front-wheel drive, you don't get a big transmission hump down there. So, all right. I think we should go for a spin. Do that right now. There's that 41 fire into life. And you know what, I can already feel it in the comment section. People are going, oh, that 4100, it's a terrible motor. It doesn't matter if it's the welded, upgraded version. It's still terrible. Yeah, you know what, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I'm not looking to set any quarter mount times in this thing or, you know, tool it around Sebring. I mean, this is a cruiser, man. Oh, fuck, I never stopped and had you see the soft top. So let's do that real quick. Damn be the sun. And we're getting away from the goats, thank God. I don't know where they were. Oh, that back window's not up all the way. Let's get that up. There, nice and in place. Okay, so you see it has this beautiful black soft top, a little wrinkled because it was down. Uh, it has a glass rear window with defrost that was bigger than the Hess and uh, Iceman version or whatever the hell their name is. And uh, again, proof that ASC did a better job converting these cars. Uh, also had a nicer line down the side. On the Hess version, uh, they cut the bodywork right here. It does this little Z thing right where the top is and comes back there. Uh, I think this car uh, with the ASC version accentuates the lines a lot nicer. But anyway, there's the soft top. And uh, when we're indicating, what are we indicating? 37, yeah, I'm gonna keep the soft top up. You know, I like the cold, but I don't love it. <laughs> I'm not part of the polar club. All right, here go the gates. Which, I mean, look at this. We've got our slab-sided, you know, high-fendered wreaths and crest, you know, Rolls-Royce looking thing with the, uh, you see up there, it's got all the turn signal and light uh, indicators. It used, um, uh, what the hell is that called? The uh, fiber optics to tell you when the lights were out and linking and on and high beams. Nice stuff. But I mean, the gate opening, it just, oh, this feels very proper, very proper. Peter has the uh, sprinkler set really nice. I mean, if the middle of the road needs to be watered, man, has he got that figured out. He's got that dialed in. He had Stephen Hawking do his, do his sprinkler controls. All right, let's try to get around here with that. Grunts and groans. All right, so again, on these old big cars, uh, you use the hood ornament to navigate. You don't try steering the car. Uh, you set the hood ornament with a point in the distance. I love the way this guy parks. Yeah, we'll just get around. Don't worry, we're okay. Yeah, we'll squeeze by. Retard. Dalton drove a lawn truck. That's how he'd park. Uh, but anyway, so you aim that hood ornament at a point in the distance, like you're looking at north on the compass, and uh, just sort of make course corrections as you get towards there. Uh, now we've got some V8 torque, so it got up to 40 or 50 pretty quick without any effort. I mean, I'm just feathering the throttle, barely pressing it, and it does get up and go. Uh, not in any kind of a race car sense. I mean, I think the quarter mile time in this car is like 17 seconds. Zero to 60 is like 12 or something, so... Uh, uh, you know, far from a, a performance car. But again, I don't give a crap. It's not the point. I mean, put the top down, cruise the boulevard, enjoy yourself. Uh, that's what this thing is about. Don't tax the motor. Why bother? Why bother? It's just not what it's for. Um, and again, remember, the average age of the guy who drove this thing was, you know, he was not a youngster. <laughs> he was far from it. Whatever was the Instagram of 1985, he was not on it, I promise you. Got somebody idling on the side of the road. We got our turn signals. This does have cruise control. Uh, also has the tilt and telescoping wheel, which is nice. Nice option on this car. It's pretty well equipped as a beer it's. And away we go. 
God. So I'm lying, you know, I'm reclining in these beautiful pillow leather seats. It's incredibly comfortable, incredibly non-supportive, which is fine because I'm not doing any cornering. And I just feel like I'm ready to, um, you know, head down to wherever it is old guys go to get up to no good. You know, again, the Asian massage, the, uh, the, the, the moose lodge or... Um, you know, the quiet bird men, whatever it is, these old, you know, well-to-do cats uh, get together and, you know, talk about, um, uh, talk about nature's credit card, I and mean, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but there it is. So this is a 1985 Cadillac Eldorado Beeritz convertible, factory convertible, one of 2,285s made. Uh, very, very rare, all said. Uh, 48,000 miles, uh, tuxedo black over burgundy leather. Uh, this is, man, this is a car that I, it just, it's made for me. This is the kind of shit that I absolutely love. Uh, I'll probably put it up for sale. <sighs> probably. Um, it'll be on the uh, website, autohousenaples.com. If you have an interest, you can call the cats there. Uh, very nice guys. Uh, Tim is a spaz. Ryan's calm. Uh, they each have their highs and lows. Uh, you know, you pick one, you pick the other. It's, you know, whatever. They're nice guys. Um, so give them a call, 239-263-8500. Uh, and uh, ask them about the Aldo, if it's for sale or not, if you want. Um, I don't know. You know, people say I should put prices. I think it would be about twenty grand. You know, and I mean, you're getting a bargain for that. Let me tell you, if you don't like the price now, wait five years, you'll love it because these things are going nowhere but up. So um, take it easy. Just, you know, <laughs> be happy you can get one of these at a price like that for the moment. Not even close to the original MSRP. Um, yeah, we got some fun stuff coming up. There's a 44,000 mile Jag XJR, uh, an 04. I haven't even got it in yet, but it's coming. Uh, Peter just bought a 16,000 mile 560 SL. I don't know where he finds this crap, but man, does he. And um, there it is. So we got some neat videos on the way. Thank you very much for having a look. We appreciate it. And we will see you with the next one. Take care.